Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to be working on a fishing reel failure. This is what I call an Amazon reel. It's a Plusino and it's a, uh, it's a 30 size. It's called the EW3000. doesn't turn. Well, what do I call them Amazon reels? They're relatively inexpensive. They're uh, sold on Amazon only. They don't have parts or service support. And uh, what they do have, I guess, is a good reputation as an inexpensive reel until the reel breaks. At which point, uh, well, you may just go back to Amazon and buy another. But uh, in this case, we're not sure why the reel has failed. The fellow did say that he had it out and was getting some really big uh, fish that were breaking off his line. And, well, I'm not quite sure what that means. In terms of, well, did the parts inside the reel fail, or did the uh, something break off with the line and jam it? Uh, well, I don't see any line jammed here, but uh, we're going to try and figure this one out. It does turn if you turn it by hand. It's very hard to turn if you crank. Well, we're going to take this reel apart. We'll do a, uh, a what, what's happening with the reel kind of a thing. If we can repair it, we certainly will. You'll get an inside look into the Plusino reel. And, uh, well, if you like these kinds of videos, if you like to learn how reels are made, how they're serviced, how uh, problems are diagnosed, and, uh, well, uh, hopefully they get repaired, uh, then I would encourage you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please use that notification button. That'll let you know uh, when I'm posting videos, and uh, you'll be able to see which ones you want to watch. All right, we're removing the handle. That goes through the main gear. It had a screw that turns on the other side. When I do that, I like to put the screw right back in the handle so I don't lose that. And when I take my pieces and parts off, I put them in a parts tray. I use a, a fast food container for that. And that way, well, I don't uh, misplace them when it comes time to reinstall. All right, this has got a reverse threaded nut that's holding on the rotor. And the ball is... Uh, the lip is short enough that you can work an open end wrench over it, or you can use a deep socket, whatever uh, you prefer. But we'll take that off. I do notice there is some sand uh, in the bowl here, and uh, we'll remove that. And we have uh, we have some sand underneath as well. As a matter of fact, we have a lot of sand underneath, and possibly that's the cause of the issue here. Not sure. Well, we're going to clean all of that out, and the best way for me to clean all of that out before I go any further is to uh, go to a, a tap, just water, use the water pressure to blow it out and rinse it away, and then we'll come back and see what we can do. So I'm going to shut the camera off right now, and we'll come back for that. Okay, well, I've rinsed away it. All I did was use water pressure, and, uh, well, I cleaned out the, the ball with some water remaining, but where you saw all that sand before, that's no longer there. And uh, you know what, if I turn this, it seems to be turning a little bit easier. I'm going to use a penetrating oil on the seams of the bale, on the bale roller, and because I saw sand in this bale trip, I'm going to put a little bit under there. I'm going to work it in. It seems to trip fine. We'll set that off to the side. Now let's take a look underneath. We're going to open up the case by removing the three side plate screws. And right now the candidate for why it's so sluggish was a whole bunch of sand under the, the rotor there. But there might be something broken underneath, so don't rush to judgment. Do a thorough take and, and look at this. Make sure that you don't just uh, assume, because when you start to assume, well, you know what they say. All right. There's three screws that are holding the side plate on. They're Phillips head screws. When I do this, I like to remove them and check. For example, that one's shorter than the one that goes underneath here. So when you go to uh, reinstall, you want to make sure you put the screws in the right places. Okay, so we have two long ones, and the one back here in the handle is the short one. Just make a note. I also recommend that if you're working on a reel like this that doesn't have support, take plenty of pictures. That way you'll have reference points as you uh, work through the reel. And if it's time to reinstall and you're stuck, well, you can go back to those reference points and kind of check it out. Make sure that you uh, 
we install it properly. Here's a fourth screw that's up top here, so a, a picture probably would have been would have been good for that. And that's uh, one of the shorter screws. So we have two short screws. That's got a different thread on it too. So that has a machine thread where these are rough threaded. And we should be able to get this off now. I'm going to use a little razor knife as a wedge. See if we can't uh, can't take that off. Just checking here to see what we got. So, Amazon Reels, I, I don't have anything against Amazon Reels. I just uh, find that they're, uh, they're viewed as disposable. All right, well, we have a dry reel here. So this dryness may be the cause of some additional issues in performance. And typically that's what happens with these reels. Unfortunately, they're sold to folks that uh, are, uh, well, they're not prone to cleaning them up, servicing them, and uh, getting them out there for the, the long run. They're more kind of use them until they break and then go get another one. And that's kind of a shame. All right, we've taken out the axle shaft. There's a lot of dirt on that axle shaft, so that may have come through from whatever happened. Beginning to wonder if this reel didn't uh, make it into the water. And that's another reason why you want to take the case off. The case is not a sealed case. You can get uh, dirt and debris below. We also have a broken bearing here. That kind of speaks to the quality of this thing. We have a bearing that's just broken. I have to see if we can't find a replacement for that somewhere. Let me remove the main gear. So yeah, you, can, you might have a reel that has 19 bearings. You may also have a reel that uh, has broken bearings, and that's what this one is. All right, we're going to see if we can't match that one up. Check the back of the gears here. So this is a combination of two things. We had some sand in there, and we have a broken bearing. All right. Clean that up. I'm going to take the oscillation gear up. Again, I'm going in the assumption that something's broken in here. So we found the broken, but now because that bearing was broken, we might have the, uh, the rollers inside. So you're going to clean that whole case up now. Make sure that you didn't leave any of those broken pieces in. I'm going to take it that this bearing is the same size as the other one. So I'm going to poke this one through. That'll help me match it up, potentially, with the replacement. It's unusual that they break, but I guess not that unusual. Okay, if I can find one that's that size, we can continue on this project. If we can't, we're going to have to stop and order it. The uh, pinion gear is working fine. So I'm going to shut the camera off, see if we can find a replacement bearing that matches that. Okay, well, I'm in luck. I uh, actually have two replacement bearings. We're going to oil the bearing and we're going to reinstall and see if we can't make this thing work all the better. I oil bearings, I don't grease them. And that's because grease attracts dirt and then bearings. Well, maybe that's why that other one kind of got jammed up the way it did. Not sure. All right, let's reinstall. And then we'll put that bearing on the main gear. And uh, we'll see if we can't give this one a second chance. On the oscillation, whoops, there's a bearing right there. On the little balls right there. So I'm continuing to check as I do this. I thought I... I kind of got most of them out of there, but I guess not. And that's that's a fear here, that uh, you got one sitting in there somewhere. It'll get into the teeth, and next thing you know, it'll start shredding teeth. All right, the oscillation gear goes back on. When you put the oscillation gear on, make sure that you put it in the down position. That'll make detaching the crosswind block easier. I'm noticing with the... Uh, the screws that they're all magnetic, so that means they're just a straight steel, not stainless steel. Another way to save a couple of dollars. So if you start to wonder why do 
the uh, I'll call them the Amazon reels, but in this case the Placino reel. Uh, why is it a less expensive than maybe some of the other ones? Well, they're, they're getting away. You saw the one thing, the bearing broke. So it can't be a very expensive bearing. And, uh, well, a lot of times it's steel versus stainless steel. We're just going to uh, put some grease onto the pinion gear here. The upper portion of this seems to work. We did find sand. I don't know if sand got into that bearing and that caused the, uh, the explosion. These bearings are not sealed. You can see the bearing in the race there. All right. Let's put the cross wine block back on. Get grease into the slot. That goes over the stud. And we can put our gear back in. We take the axle shaft, put a light coat of grease onto the axle shaft. Don't put a lot on because as it comes through your pinion gear, it will by itself uh, scrape off the tongue which is a close. When you have that seated in, go back to your parts tray and get the screw that you removed from the cross wind block. Tighten that down. And we're going to take one of those bearings I found. And this is not a new bearing, so one of the habits I have, if I get a reel that breaks, I'll remove the pieces that are usable. And I guess one of the reels that I broke had that bearing. Good fortune here. Alright, there's two more balls. You can see them right in there. Those got to come out. Right there. Looks like uh, poppy seeds. Alright, that's clear now. Let's put that case back on. to turn. Seems to be turning okay. Then we need to remember what we got here from the side plate screw. So there's a machine threaded screw which went up top here. Well if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, if you want to leave those questions in the comment section, I will try to answer those for you. I'm going to make sure that we oil these bearing, the bearing that's up top here. It does have an anti-reverse clutch in it. This is the short uh, rough threaded screw. Remember we said that went in the handle arm. The other two are the same size. One goes below and one goes to the right. This one interestingly enough does have an anti-reverse override. You can override your anti-reverse clutch there. That's got a little bit of engineering complexity to it. We didn't touch the anti-reverse today. This is all about just getting this reel going again, finding out why it failed, and what we're finding out in the failure is that, well, the core issue there was the broken side plate bearing, for sure. All right, go ahead and put the rotor nut back on. And you remember, this is a reverse threaded screw, so it's going on counterclockwise rather than clockwise. Tighten that down. I guess we have a couple of issues going there. The, the spool would have been out of alignment. That would have caused a, a rough turn. Still a little tight, but I'm not sure if that tight is because the Reel is just a tight reel. We'll find out. Put the handle on, see how we did. So if you have one of these, you just saw how to service it. Nine plus one bearings. Now one of those bearings was not a very good one, was it? Well, there you go. It's turning. We'll show you how to service the drag stack on this as well. 
I think we solved the main issue, which was the, the main gear bearing. Let's take a look at the drag stock, see what's in this while we're at it. Kind of a shame, but buyer, I guess, buyer beware, or buyer be forewarned. If you're finding a reel that's uh, inexpensive, expect in, inexpensive things to be in the reel. All right, I want to get the get the sand out of that little personal air. Then we have felt washers that are completely dry. That's not a good situation to be in. You want to make sure that these are wet. You can use grease or oil. I prefer oil on felt washers. We have two keyed washers. They're round with rectangular centers. One goes high and one goes low. The second of the dry washers goes in and gets a good amount of oil on that. The middle washer is called an eared washer. It's a round hole in the center with two studs on it. This is a traditional drag stack in that regard. That the third of the dry washers goes in. The second of the keyed washers goes in and then our clip goes in. There's a groove in the spool here that accepts that clip. Make sure that it rests in it. And a little bit of sand in the bottom of that too. So I'm thinking maybe the sand got into that bearing somehow. Kind of odd, but something happened there. Okay, tighten this up, give it a test, give it a second chance. Let's see how we did. Try this tight. There we go. Now we're ready, back ready to go fishing again sure that your bell was tripping. It is. Okay. All set. All ready to go again. That's how to service a uh, Placino reel, the EW3000. And uh, it's also how to uh, evaluate a reel, how to do a little bit of a diagnosis on uh, the problem and the issue. And this one, it was pretty apparent. And, uh, well, how to give it a second chance. I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel everybody involved, police, safety, fire, rescue, and the like, for all it is that you do. And I want to take a uh, opportunity to thank everybody for watching and everybody for subscribing and uh, for all that you do to keep the channel vibrant. This is with Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.